Hello, James Maxwell Supersonic Studios with you here, and it's currently the 23rd of March. I'm due at Rancho Indalo to come visit Mary and Anthony and all the beasties here in less than a month. So I've been tuning up a little bit, not too much, about 15 minutes a couple of times a week, just getting a few minor corrections on my technique. And I wanted to talk about one of my ideas and kind of uh, things to think about when you're looking to get into whip cracking or wanting to do more whip cracking. So, uh, Anthony was, of course, the whip coach to Harrison Ford for Indiana Jones 4. Um, and from everything I can understand, it was a very successful collaboration and there was a lot of work done. One of my ultimate goals has always been I need to speak to Anthony and learn a little bit about what precisely uh, Harrison learned as his return for Indiana Jones. And I'd like to uh, do some of the intermediate and advanced stuff that he was taught in preparation for his role and also kind of pick Anthony's brain a little bit about what he wanted to see Indiana Jones be able to use. That's not really a question we've ever had the ability to ask anybody before, and uh, I think I would be remiss if I didn't take that opportunity. But uh, as I do this, uh, let's talk about whip length. Uh, this is a uh, seven-foot uh, economy bullwhip by uh, Torrance Fisher of Sword Guy Build. It's one of my favorite whips. Um, it's, it's lightweight, and it moves really, really, really well. And for my general work, you know, I'm going to get some space here. For my general work, it, it's perfect. It, it, it doesn't, it moves well slowly, which is something that I really, straight at camera there, something I really look for in a whip is its ability to slow down, right? And uh, just be able to put it out there right where I want it in, in rolling loop. Um, but one thing is, you know, my backyard isn't that big, but uh, even with a seven foot whip, you reach the limit of what you can do pretty quickly as far as space goes. Um, I've had to spend a lot of time cutting my overhead, and even still, it still becomes an issue trying to work this, right? So this is seven feet long. That, that actually was terrible. That, that wasn't even full extension. Let's try that again. There it is. Um, so when you're wanting to do more, or you're wanting to work the Indiana Jones whip, it takes a lot of space. Like a lot of space. Like if you have never cracked a 10 foot whip before, um, I was reminded of this recently when I came out to just do a little bit of work. It takes a lot of space. I'm seven feet full extension right here, about. If I wanted to crack the Indiana Jones whip, this isn't this isn't enough space. Not by a long shot, actually. I'm more. Um, I'm going to be more here. Not only for distance in front of me, but also distance behind me. Right? There's no way that I can get a full roll here for this. So that's beyond camera range, right? That's me going all the way beyond, trying to get a little bit of a roll here, all right? And let's not even talk about overheads. For our compound throws, that's a lot of distance. And I'm still hitting, uh, still hitting the overhead there, right? Um, so it, it, you've got a sphere that is 14 feet uh, in radius, basically. Yes, radius, because the hammer is all the way across. In radius, around you, to be able to crack this successfully. And that is not a very easy thing to do in a private home. <laughs> or in this case, a private backyard, right? Although I will say that is one area where I really think the rolling loop style excels, right? Uh, Anthony says that the Indiana Jones whip is best suited to uh, forward direct throw, or uh, single direct throws on all eight angles of attack. And one of the things that that does is that lowers the height requirement of this whip. So if I am not throwing compound, and I'm like throwing trebuchet or a flick, right? That distance overhead is really, really reduced. I'm still hitting the, uh, the hot tub behind the camera. Uh, but that distance, 
is really, really reduced. I'm, I'm off to the side there. Or for my single direct throws, right? My height isn't as much of an issue. And I've always often thought that that idea of lowering the height for these types of shots um, in camera, right? Is, is one of the areas that it really, really works well. And of course this whip can do them all, right? Um, and that's really, really cool. We want to get into multiple throws. I know that is one thing that the reason he went with uh, the jack style because he knew that sip and transition would give him more of a leverage for multiple throws. Um, I've been playing around a little bit with that and uh, maybe we'll explore that a little later on just because I don't have the space here to really show it off to the full extent with this whip. But when you get into more multiple throws, oops, again, over head and behind. When you get into multiple throws, uh, multi angles and things like that with a longer whip, you are left pretty much doing a lot of continuing these motions here, right? Except that it's a quarter again is slow because the whip's longer and heavier, but it's delivering a lot of energy and a lot of power in these throws. But you're keeping the whip moving, you're not stopping it, and it's very, very flowy when you're using a longer whip for multiple throws. One thing I want to remember too is I'm not throwing behind me. Very rarely am I going to want to do something like that. Why? Because this makes a noise behind me. It puts nothing in front of me and makes me makes makes me vulnerable. Keeping this in front of me, I want to remember where that is. Right. So uh, I do know that's something that uh, Anthony wanted to put into Harrison's vocabulary, and I'm really curious to start playing with these longer whips. These longer heavier whips and see where that can be explored as well as touching a little bit up on uh, the forthcoming uh, the combative whip at multiple ranges which I'm really excited to see um, and hopefully can apply some of my long whip work to that because the fact of the matter is is that anywhere between four and a half to seven feet really is my working length whip it's cool having the Indiana Jones whip I wanted this particular whip um, from the recommendations that I got uh, from Midwest Whips, it's a 1936 Indy, uh, as close as I'm probably ever going to get to owning a David Morgan from the late 70s, early 80s, but um, it, it's kind of fun, it's kind of like, a, it's kind of like uh, a general use leather jacket, it comes out every now and then, uh, but as far as general work, it's not my preferred whip to use, um, but I'm really happy that I have it, I'm never going to let it go. So, there are some rambling thoughts uh, on what I'm doing, what I'm tuning up for, I hope to get some really good videos up at the ranch. Um, this time, last time, I was so busy training, I didn't get any time to do any sort of videos or content creation. But I'm really going to try this time to get some content creation. Uh, we're also going to see Anthony and Mary again at Combat Con uh, in July, so hopefully this will give us a little bit more time for me to pull the camera out uh, and talk to Anthony on camera, or to get some of my training and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, I guess until next time, practice stay safe.